What's the word, y'all? Yeah, I'm, I'm smiling a little bit. Listen, my boys are on the West Coast road trip, and right now they are one and one on this trip, man. Without Vucevic, without Kobe White, who's coming back tomorrow, without Patrick Williams, I am excited because this West Coast road trip is no joke. The Atlanta Hawks were just in the conference finals last year. They went on this West Coast road trip, and they lost all six games. They got back home today, and they won a game. So that just lets you know this is no joke. And my boys are one and one. We just beat a very competent, very good Clippers team. With Paul George looking like an MVP candidate, we went into the Staples Center and, and played amazing defense, and we won a game. I'm excited about that. Now, tomorrow we got the Lakers, and we'll see how that goes. But right now, let me let me just enjoy just a little bit. And they say that hindsight is 2020, which is 100% facts. But today, I will be digging up old receipts. Because even in the moment, some of these articles that were written about my boys, in the moment, they were bad. And now... 10, 15 games to the season, they are even worse. And this feels weird because um, a lot of y'all know I work with Bleach Report. So me talking about a Bleach Report article and talking trash about it, probably is bad for business considering my contract is literally up <laughs> at the end of the month. But what, what you gonna resign me, BR, hopefully. I'm ranking the 10 worst signings of the 2021 NBA free agency. Who's the cover boy here? It is one comp 10, or I guess he's not comp 10 anymore. He still get the nickname. He's wearing the number 11. But the cover boy is DeMar DeRozan. Is DeMar DeRozan. Like, when you see the number 385, a lot of people believe that the Bulls overpaid. And that the jury's still out on that. You know what I'm saying? You can't judge a contract 15 games to the season. But that's not what Bleach Report did in here. They didn't specifically talk about the money paid, but they talk about DeMar DeRozan as a player, right? DeMar's growth as a playmaker won't be utilized in Chicago since Levine, Vucevic, and Lonzo all need touch, significant touches. DeMar off the ball only highlights his limited shooting, career 28% from three, and he shrinks the floor. They talk about his bad defense. The Bulls have one of the best defensive teams in the league right now. The Bulls should be better next season, but better as in maybe competing for a six or seven seed in the East. The jury is still out on that. I'm excited about my Bulls team, but I can't tell you for sure that we're a top three seed in the, in the league. We, you know, it's a long season. The Bulls also parted with that is young Alfred Camino in a future first round pick in two seconds in the sign a trade um this doesn't look like anything considering the amount of productivity we've got from DeMar DeRozan early in the season he has closed out games he's hit big time shots and he's been the co-star that we needed with Zach Levine for the last couple years yikes you could argue that young who would cost 14.2 million next season contributes more to winning than DeRozan and ESPN ranked DeMar DeRozan as like the 82nd best player in the entire league. And so far this season, DeMar DeRozan has showed that every penny that we've paid him so far or every misconception about him going into his year 32, 33 season have been completely wrong. And I am excited about the way DeMar DeRozan's played and my Bulls have played considering we were missing three out of our top six players in our rotation. That's something that people don't... Now, I know everybody's dealing with injuries and, and virus stuff, but we're missing Vucevic. We're missing Patrick Williams. That's our entire front court right there. And we're also missing Kobe White, but he comes back tomorrow. Okay, that's enough about the Bulls. Shout out to the Clippers, man. They played a great game. The defense was incredible. They... they Tyron Lue deserves a lot of credit, and we've talked about this on the channel before, especially after the playoffs last year. His in-game adjustments are elite. In the first half, they did a terrible job defensively. In the second half, they were running like this box and one slash double team of DeMar and Zach Levine, and that brought them back into that game. The defensive rotations for the Clippers were, were crazy today. They were like double teaming the ball, then also getting the back in their hands in the passing lane, and Paul George was looking like an MVP candidate today. Now, I will say, <laughs> I'm usually not a dude to talk about the calls, but hey, Clippers got a lot of them. And there was a missed travel call from Luke Kennard. It was, it was kind of hectic. I need... what Zach Levine needs to get the respect of some of the better players in the league when he drives to the lane. I feel like he be getting his butt beat every time he goes to the rim and he don't get as many calls. And then that get, gets him frustrated. Then he starts to play worse. He just needs the respect of the referees. I don't know how you do. You take him out to dinner on the offseason. I don't know how you get that respect. He don't got that right now. But the Clippers team looked really solid. It just so happened that like Reggie Jackson, who's been really consistent for them this season, couldn't hit a shot. Or um, and Nicholas Batum, I guess this is the second game in a row he's really struggled. You know what I'm saying? All of those things aren't happening every single night for them. There's a reason why they were just on like a seven-game win streak. It's a really solid team, though. Let's talk about some of the other games of the day. The first game started with the Lakers versus the Spurs, and it started at like 2 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a football guy. I've made that very clear. My life when it comes to sports is basketball. And this season, we did start baseball, which is really fun. I'm excited about getting back into baseball once next season started. But my life is, is basketball. So, yes, yeah, a Sunday and Bad, and football is on. I'm tweeting about Anthony Davis having 27 in the first half, and my replies are like, Kenny, we don't care. Football is on. 
guess I guess y'all are more diverse when it comes to sports to me. The Lakers always make it interesting. You know what I'm saying? This is not a game that had to be close down the line, but it, it was. I give the Spurs a lot of credit because Anthony Davis was dominating them. Poor Drew Eubanks to do. What is he supposed to do? Porzingis gave him 33 a few nights ago, and now you had Anthony Davis giving them 27 in the first half. They just don't have a center since Jakob Pert. Perto is out with his injury or whatever he's dealing with. Um, Anthony Davis killed it, but in the second half, Greg Popovich was like, "Listen, we don't trust nobody else on this team, so we're gonna double Anthony Davis." And AD gets a lot of credit because once the double teams start coming, he showed that playmaking ability that we all know was there, and he ended up with like seven assists. How many assists did he end up with? Um, total assists. Ended up being six. He ended with six assists, and I'm pretty sure all of those came in the second half. Tyler Horn Tucker was the main reason I was watching this game because, you know what I'm saying, I could have been doing other stuff, recording other videos, but his season debut was really good. Defensively, he was all over the place, and he is the type of player that, that LeBron really likes. And, and you can understand why they extended him, um, even though a lot of Lakers fans love Alex Caruso, which makes sense. Shout out to Rob Palenka. Thank you for that, by the way. Coming from a Bulls fan, thank you. But Tyler Hurt Tucker, the way he performed today, if you're getting something similar to that on a consistent basis, pretty solid contract. Um, you also had a, a um, Wayne Ellington game, and a lot of that is due to the, the kickouts from Anthony Davis. But the Spurs are now uh, have the record of 4-9 with a positive point differential. So they're in, in every single game. They just don't end up closing out. Shout out to DeJounte Murray. Another triple-double. Let's get to the next game. And that was the Atlanta Hawks winning by 20 against the Bucks. A big-time Trey Young game. Um, they just came back from that big old West Coast trip. And it was it was Dominique Wilkins on the call. He was saying that after you get back from a big trip like that, that first home game, he counts as part of the road trip as well. Because your body is still adjusted. Because they spent like two weeks out West. And now they're, out, they're, they're back on the East. Um, but none of that mattered because Trey Young came out and he was Ball in it. I think he had like seven threes in the first half, into a 42 total points. This was the best game for Clint Capella, I, at least that I saw in my eyes. I don't know if the counter stats say that, but he was moving more fluently than he has been all year. You, if you didn't know, he's coming off an Achilles injury. He caught some lobs. He had some big dunks. Um, John Collins was great. And, and you know what? This is a big win for them, especially since they found out today that DeAndre Hunter is going to be out for a, at the minimum two months. So they need some other people to fill those shoes, play some good defense, and they had that today. The Bucs is just so unfortunate. Like, I, I'm just waiting. Before I even really talk about the Bucs this season, I'm waiting for them to get healthy. I don't know if they'll ever get to 100% health. You know, Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, and then today they were missing um, um, uh, Dante DiVincenzo too. So it's like, yeah, they lose a game like this, but how much can you... You read into it. They're missing three start. They're literally missing three starters, and they have been for the entire season. Let's go to the next game of the day, which was the Charlotte Hornets beating the Warriors. I saw this on Reddit, so take it with a grain of salt because I did not fact check this. But somebody on Reddit said that the Warriors, through 12 games, have had the easiest strength of schedule in the history of basketball through the first 12 games. I don't, Again, I don't know how true it is. But that was the wildest thing I saw all day. And look, they leave California because most of their games have been at home, if you didn't know. They leave California and they lose the first game. Very Now, I'm not saying that the Warriors aren't legit, um, but they end up losing this game. Now, I want to give a lot of credit to two players on the Hornets specifically. The first one being Cody Martin. His defense um, his defense today on Steph Curry was, was out of this world. Like, he did not let Steph Curry get any breaths of air. Through the entire game. You know what I'm saying? And that was the type of defense I wanted to see my Bulls play with, like, Alex Caruso's, like, great on-ball defense, defense. They couldn't do it. Um, Cody Martin, and he also scored 12 points. I didn't even realize he scored 12 points. And then the second player is Terry Rozier for winning that tip ball against Draymond Green because he was setting himself up for failure. How do you dribble? Listen, when I, I, listen, I don't have a lot of experience playing basketball. I played two years of high school basketball. Freshman B team. And bench warmer sophomore year. Listen, so I ain't got a lot of experience. But one thing I do know is when a trap is coming, you do not want to find yourself in a corner of the court. And Terry Rozier found himself there, got tangled up, and Draymond Green and him jumped. And he out jumped Draymond Green to keep the game alive. Big time. Big time for them. Um, good game. Didn't watch a single seconds of the Sun beating the Rockets. I've said this before. I will not watch the Rockets. I would rather watch Rockets highlights <laughs> than watch Rockets games right now. And can you blame me, Rockets fans? Is that is that insulting? Can you blame me? You If you've been watching your team, you know that that stuff is not fun. Um, the Nets ended up beating the Thunder. Th that's that's my recap of that. Now, a game that I did really watch um, were the Trailblazers versus the Nuggets. Now, there was no Damian Lillard in that one, and that was what intrigued me the most. Um, shout out to Damian Lillard for finally saying, hey, I'm injured, so let me sit out a game. 
So, I mean, they lo they lost the game, but I'd rather him get better and them lose than him be playing hurt and them still lose. I really like Anthony Simon. So, whenever he gets the opportunity to start, I'm here for it. And I think the last time he started, he ended up with 30. So, I'm like, okay, he's going against Jokic. <laughs> That's the matchup everybody been waiting for. Anthony Simons versus Jokic. And um, Ant had an okay game. But I want to showcase the, the Jokic stuff because... Do I dare say he's he's been better this year than last year? Is that crazy to say? He's been better this year than last year. And he's been a low-key guy when it comes to the MP, MVP race. Everybody's got Steph Curry. Everybody's got Kevin Durant. Um, some people have Paul George up to this point. Jokic is right there, too. You know what I'm saying? Jokic should be number three, number two, sometimes even number one player on the MVP ballot so far this season. He was incredible. I recorded a single clip. And you know what? I'll play this clip right now. The carom. Corner three. Yes. That's good sign. I was going to tweet that clip, but every time I watch it, I, I just know that somebody on Twitter is going to be like, Kenny, that was a, a simple pass. And it was, but it was like the third read of the play with like three seconds to go. Everybody else in that situation with three seconds on the clock is not looking to find the third open man. You know what I'm saying? You're going to chuck up a shot, but no. He surveyed his options and he found an open player in the corner who wasn't even expecting to get the ball and they cashed it. Like, he is, Jokic is must-see TV. Then I had an exchange on Twitter. Um, the Denver Nuggets Twitter account tweeted, like, are y'all having fun? And at that point, I was having fun. I was watching Jokic do his thing. So I tweeted, replied, yeah. And somebody said, we need a Bones Highland segment of the next episode. So here we are. Bones Highland. Pretty good. I've talked about Bones Highland the last three episodes, ladies and gentlemen. Cut me some slack. I don't know what else I can really say about Bones Highland other than it seems like he's getting better and more consistent every single game. He had a shot from almost the logo, and I don't know the individual commentators in each city. They call it the Boneyard. I would, I like that. Um, I my 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 um suggestion is maybe not something you say on national TV, but what about what about um the Bone Zone? Yeah, he just he just took you to the bone zone. But it was really Nikola Jokic and company because everybody contributed it in their own way. I don't even know what happened to Will Barton. Was he he had to be like a late game scratch or something because and did not play coach's decision. Now I gotta Google because he's been he's low key been one of the most underrated players in the league this year. So I gotta figure out why he didn't why he didn't play tonight. Lower back tightness. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I was about to say I don't know how that man went from like the second best player on the team to getting coach, coach DMP coach's decisions. Um, but yeah, shout out to Bones Highland, man. I immediately became a fan of Bones based on his name. Um, so it does help that he's actually good at basketball. You know what I'm saying? Looking back on this article, um, on the worst signings, number two on the list is Jared Allen, and Jared Allen might be an All Star this season. So. Not not the best work, Bleach Report. Um, this specific article, not that great. 